Chuck Snyder. At this time, we'll call a regular meeting in the New Alms City Council for January 19, 2016, 5 p.m. to order. First item on the agenda is the consent agenda items. What's your wishes? I'll offer a motion to approve. Second. We got a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda items. Any discussion on any? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. What we'll do at this time is we'll drop down to item 3F and uh, for sake of time for some people in the audience here. And that's consider a motion authorizing the submittal of an application to the Department of Economic Development deed for Minnesota Investment Fund financing for $450,000 to assist the Kraft Heinz Company with facility improvements. Mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Grumman, do you have something there? I would like to hear from the community development director a little bit more about this program. Yes, sir. Mr. Schnobrick, would you be willing to explain the Minnesota Investment Fund? As best I can. <laughs> uh, Dave Schnobrick, community <laughs> development director. Uh, the Minnesota Investment Fund program is offered by the state of Minnesota through the Department of Employment and Economic Development. Um, for a, and the intention of the program is to create uh, or to support the creation of jobs. Um, in this particular case, um, we're dealing with a, uh, a private company, but the applicant um, is the city or would be the municipality in which um, the business is, um, is located. Um, typically, you know, the amount of assistance is generally um, um, based on the number of jobs that are, are going to be created. And in this particular case, we're looking at um, 90 retained jobs and 50 new jobs. And the request is for $450,000. I might note that that's an approximate number. Um, the first step in the process is to submit the application material. The state will review that and then, um, you know, advise us as to, you know, the amount of an award that they will, um, will support. Um, and then we'll go through the contractual basis uh, with the company, you know, regarding the, um, the grant. Thank you. Any questions? I just uh, wondered if they, uh, if there's any uh, legal issues that we should be uh, uh, to, that we should consider in light of the fact that it's the city that's uh, applying for the uh, financing from uh, deed. Uh, Mr. President, I'm not aware, um, and Councilor Webster, I'm not aware of any issues that would uh, impact this. I believe it is something that we can advance. Yeah. I might note that uh, we previously applied and received uh, funding through this program for Palm Beach Marine Craft, who's no longer um, in the community, uh, for Beacon, and also for MPI after the fire in 2005. In the same dollar amount or in approximate dollar amount? Uh, they were a little bit lower in those instances. And other than staff time, um, the cost to the city is what? Um, at this point, um, we're not aware of any cost to the city. No matching funds, no. Um, I think after the state gets the application and reviews it, uh, we'll have a better idea if um, that <coughs> may or may not be a requirement. Okay. And Mr. Briss, do we have any idea of the uh, timeline uh, involved here? Um, according to um, state representatives, um, upon the submittal of the application, it needs to be a complete submittal. Um, they will review and respond within apparently a two-week time period. Wow. Mm -hmm. I know why we have our craft people here. Do they want to say anything or, or not? Or <laughs> I want to put you on the spot, but <laughs> they probably have to talk at the mic, though, yeah. State your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Matt Hippie. Uh, Plant manager and uh, live in Mankato, Minnesota, at uh, 200 Partridge Path. Mm -hmm. um, what I'd like to say is we're in a very competitive business market. This is one step and one piece of the, um, our process, and would like you to very much consider it. It would help us uh, 
as we stated, retain 90 jobs and uh, bring in approximately 50 more over the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. So it's about a two-year process is what you're thinking to, get to complete the project? We're looking at starting production lines in June of, set, uh, of, 19, er, of 2017, 2017 with some ongoing um, training and development. And then, uh, Mr. I, so I understand that, uh, that uh, all the construction will be within the existing building? Um, the purpo the proposed, uh, there, um, there might be some expansion to the building oh, also. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Proposed as we move forward, <coughs> waiting for some other decisions. Okay, okay, thank you. Anybody else? I guess I got a question maybe to staff or how did we arrive at $450,000? Is that just, is there a formula for this or? The, that particular number comes from the industry that's requesting the, okay. the finance. And, and, and probably we should just take a step back just for explanation purposes. We, you know, we, like all you know, things, sometimes <clears throat> you see the tip of the iceberg here. This is actually the public aspect of it. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Schnobrick and Brian Toll uh, and myself, uh, as well as a little a small portion of the, the mayor under his signature, we've been working with uh, representatives from Kraft for probably the last two and a half, three months. Mm -hmm. And under the mayor's signature, he put forth all of the different economic development <coughs> programs that the city has to offer. Now, for one reason or another, they may have said, no, we don't want this one, but we do want this one. And uh, MIF is one of those programs they, they, they sought to uh, avail themselves of, mm -hmm. at which time uh, we were also working with the state of Minnesota uh, uh, deed representatives. We all met here at City Hall so that the state and the city work in unison on these programs so there's mm -hmm. no big surprise when it gets to the end. And so uh, Kraft has had, uh, or, or their representative, has had you know discussions with Deed already, mm -hmm. talking about the different programs the state has available to them, and so you're going to see probably a a, um, a collection of this program and that program, <coughs> some state programs, possibly some city programs, and and also maybe some programs that the uh, utility has available to it to assist uh, this particular development project. So this is just first thing that's that's come up the city council and the public utility commission will likely see you know maybe two maybe three more of these different programs that they may want to look mm -hmm. at and then again after they they uh, get through some of the process of uh, evaluating the program they may say no we don't want to we don't want to do that program so this is just kind of like the beginning mm -hmm. uh, they they have all the information uh, for the different programs that we have to offer and uh, we'll, we're just going to wait and see which ones they want to bring forward. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's I what's <coughs> led us up to up to sure. this point, basically. Mr. President, I you know I know we know Kraft and Heinz has been here for 60 years, 400 employees, mm -hmm. um, 17 million dollar payroll. Um, we strongly support. I know I strongly certainly support this, and and I think with this fall when we heard the sad news that Target was closing, this certainly. Is, uh, brings a smile to our face to have some uh, new jobs created in our community. So thank you. So thank you for coming tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Dave? Just uh, one further thing that I'd like to note is that we are required to hold a public hearing mm -hmm. on the application. So once the application is um, in a more complete um, position, um, we will be scheduling a public hearing, and it could be as soon as your next meeting. Okay. I was going to ask you about so it's a couple of weeks to prepare it. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not a gigantic, horrific application? Um, it's not as bad <coughs> as I've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. I can but imagine that it's yeah. all right. I have to agree also that um, we thank Kraft for being here and wanting to expand, and I would like to make a motion to authorize the submittal of this application. I'll second, I'll second that. Yeah. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Aye. Motion carries. Good luck. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. All right. We'll go back to item 2A. Consider resolution approving the First Amendment of the Restated Development Agreement with Minnesota Strauss LLC for the property located at 103 to 123 
South Minnesota Street. Mayor, uh, or, yep. <coughs> Mr. President, members of the council, um, the city council at the request of the developer, Mr. Kretsch, instructed staff in our office to revise the development agreement and to specifically remove the previous provisions um, that included a debt service ratio uh, with respect to the TIF allocation. Uh, we've done so. Uh, we have frankly, between uh, Dave Schnobrick and I, probably prepared many different versions of this <laughs> agreement. Um, they were reviewed by Mr. Kretsch, by several attorneys working with him, by his lender. And my understanding is that the agreement that's been presented tonight for your consideration is acceptable by all parties concerned. Um, as far as the changes <coughs> to it, one of the things that the lender required <coughs> is that the city would actually be signing a TIF note um, and this is just evidence of what our agreement is under the development agreement and the TIF plan that if the uh, increments are paid based upon the project that these would be paid out according to the terms of the agreement. There is no further obligation on the part of the city. This is not a general obligation. It's not an actual debt that is owed. It just is further confirmation of what we have agreed to do in any case. It is capped uh, at the $2,144,841. Um, and otherwise, I think all of the terms, the substance of the agreement is substantially identical to what it was before. Uh, I know Dave has, I think, been very careful about making sure that what is going to be allowed to be reimbursed under the TIF plan is what is provided for by statute. So it's going to cover those things and those things <coughs> only. So based upon that, I believe that uh, Mr. Schnobrick and I can recommend that the council would approve this and uh, agree that the city could sign it. I'll offer the resolution to waive the reading. I'll second that. Could we also include, <coughs> as we have in past development yes. agreements and things like that, that if there is next week a comment brought up by one of the many attorneys that the city attorney has the ability to make adjustments to the agreement as long as it doesn't substantially change the terms of the agreement. Because sometimes it's just clarification yes. words yep. and sometimes it's, it's I'm just fine with that. middle, I'm fine with little that. stuff. Yep. But uh, in the past, you've authorized mm -hmm. the city attorney to be allowed to do that. I'll include that. I'll okay. include that in my second. Okay. we got a motion and a second off the resolution. Waive the reading. Any more discussion? Let's build this thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finance director, please call the roll. <laughs> Councilor Fisher. Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Webster? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. Item 3A, consider resolution accepting donations to the New Orleans Police Department to be used for the purposes of early childhood family education safety fairs bicycle helmet <coughs> program. I'll offer the resolution to waive the reading. I'll second. We got a motion and a second off the resolution to waive the reading. The amount is Alliance Bank, $100, South Point, $60, Citizens Bank, $200, and Franson Bank, $30. Mm -hmm. And the mayor will send out thank yous. <coughs> Finance director, please call the roll. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Mack? Yes. Councilor Schultz? Yes. Councilor Webster? Yes. President Schmitz? <coughs> yes, motion carries. Item 3B, consider, mo consider a motion to set a date for a public hearing on the 2016 MSAS improvement project for Tuesday, February 16, 2016 at 5 p.m. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Item 3C, consider resolution accepting donations and, and memorials to the New Orleans Public Library. I'll offer the resolution. Waive the reading. Second. We got a motion and a second off the resolution. Waive the reading. Any more discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Resolution. Oh, resolution. For, sorry. <laughs> Finance director, please call the roll. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Mack? Yes. Councillor Schultz? Yes. Councillor Webster? Yes. President Schmitz? Yes. Motion carries. <laughs> Item 3D, consider a motion to receive a project proposal for Nathan First, Heart of New Ulm project to paint street murals on select at select intersections in New Ulm. 
Mr. First is here to present if we would like to hear from him. I think we would like to hear from him. Like hear All right. Uh -huh. All right uh, Nathan First, 506 and one half South Jefferson. Um, here today, well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for your time. Um, it's an honor to be able to present this project to you. Um, I guess I can first start by saying what I'm doing here in New Ulm. My position is with the Minnesota Green Corps, um, and particularly um, my host site is at the heart of New Ulm, and I'm working on active transportation issues, which basically means uh, walking and biking, mm -hmm. um, and that means safe routes to school. So um, this this project came about uh, because you know we're thinking about um, how how do we kind of build off the momentum of this recent Safe Routes to School plan that had been finished last June. And um, we sort of need to kind of build some um, community knowledge about Safe Routes to School program, and I thought this would be a very um, interesting way to do it. It sort of takes into account the strong art tradition of New Ulm and also the um, strong body, strong mind ethic. Um, so more uh, particulars about the project, um, there are four intersections that I would like or I propose um, have murals painted on them uh, in New Ulm, um, Payne and 4th South Street, Payne and 2nd South Street, State and 6th North Street, and Minnesota and 3rd North Street. Mm -hmm. And um, it uh, should be noted that these intersections are all controlled by four-way stops. Um, so that was one of the concerns that had been voiced before was um, if you paint an, a mural in an intersection, it might distract someone. Um, you're reducing that, hopefully, by um, having a four-way stop there. And so I can um, now I will address some of the questions in the agenda packet. Um, and the one of the first questions I'd like to address is what is the value um, of this of, of this project? And I think that uh, you know promoting the knowledge of safe routes to school and act tra active transportation is valuable. Um, promoting public art and uh, especially like the fire hydrant project which I think was um, pretty well received by the community um, enga and engaging the uh, community um, in, in some um, safety conversations. So the type of paint that I'm that has been used in the past and in my research I found it was a latex based traffic paint. Uh, it's non retroreflective which means it's not shiny so at night headlights won't um, be shining off the paint. Uh, and also an anti-skid additive can be added. Um, who maintains and repaints the mural? Uh, there would be a maintenance clause similar to the fire hydrant project. Uh, that would be um, a three year basically uh, maintenance uh, obligation for the artist that would be painting it. Um, and touch ups as necessary. So uh, written into the grants uh, that we're doing that we will uh, be pursuing, um, we'll be receiving extra supplies so we can accommodate for these touch-ups. Um, is it a distraction to motors or pedestrians? Um, it, we're trying to eliminate that by placing them at four-way four intersections and um, basically setting some criteria where the designs cannot um, have elements that will draw pedestrians into the roadway. Another question was, you know, would motorists use this as an area to basically burn out and, and, and um, vandalize and affect the murals? Um, I think it's sort of a disservice to say that, to assume that it will happen, but you can't be naive. And, um, you know, with the maintenance clause, hopefully we will be able to um, accommodate for any situation like that in the three-year period. And then is there adequate um, traction? I think the anti-skid additives would um, help to provide the necessary road conditions. So with that, uh, are there any questions? Mm -hmm. I guess I have one maybe for the city attorney. I mean, do, do you see anything uh, or, you know, I mean, to start off with? Mm -hmm. you know, that'd be my first I'd question, I you know. But I think that the presentation correctly notes that, of course, this can't be done without the permission of the council. Um, Beyond that, I don't see any legal issues. Um, 
I guess I'm depending upon what a contract would say. There's reference in here to removing the uh, murals by pressure washing. I'm not sure if our engineer knows how that would work. Um, with Wade Mr. Dick Curry State. might have some information on that. He too. might might be aware of that. I don't know who's going to be responsible for that when the contract is up. The city has to incur that expense, mm -hmm. or someone else will be paying for that. Um, <clears throat> as a motorcyclist, and knowing there's at least one other person who may ride a scooter, even without a helmet sometimes, <laughs> um, we may want to be <laughs> careful of um, making sure that, in fact, there is anti-skid paint on there, understanding that it's a totally controlled intersection. But if there's an accident and we've approved this and an expert is going to argue that the coefficient of friction has been reduced, our streets are primarily for vehicular traffic. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> if we're affecting the safety of them by having this type of mural, I think that's something we should be giving some real mm -hmm. thought to. Mm -hmm. I just don't know enough about them to mm -hmm. know if that's really going to be mm -hmm. accurate. I guess and I have another question, I guess, for you, Nathan. Is there anything like this that's been done in the state that yeah. you're aware of? I yeah, mean, that's a good question. Uh, um, several of them have been painted in Minneapolis and also in St. Paul. Um, Minneapolis does have a policy about um, putting these murals in, um, and so does St. Paul, and I think also Madison, Wisconsin. So these have definitely been done successfully before, um, and this would be the first sort of um, set of murals that would actually incorporate safe routes to school themes. Mm -hmm. Have you had contact with the Grand and what's their involvement? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, Board of the Grand voted in favor of supporting this so they would be a partner in this project. Mm -hmm. question is after the three years um, who's going to pay to clean it up and what, what, mm -hmm. what's your thoughts on that whole process um, I talked to someone who works for springboard and of the arts or for the arts excuse me in Minneapolis and um, she had been involved in one of these projects before and essentially um, the folks <coughs> there actually just they they let it fade um, after a while the paint fades and it doesn't look unseemly she said it's um, just sort of lightens. Mm -hmm. And so that was there. Um, they didn't remove it at all. Um, they didn't take any action to do that. <coughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I have a question. Um, you talk about this being a way to kind of get out the word of safe walks <coughs> to school. And so what type of murals are you kind of thinking that will be out there? Or is there a better way to use that money to get that message out? Um, and you're in your selection of the sites you said are four-way stops. Um, are they on the bike route? Yep. Uh, all four of the locations are on the bike routes that the council approved. So that would also be part of the messaging. Um, I, I do have an example of some of the projects that have been completed. I'll zoom in here just a little bit. Um, you can kind of see uh, what we were thinking about there, but um, as far as um, your first question about uh, it was about um, how it ties back to yep. your mission of safe routes to school, like the ones that you have here really is just art, it's, and mm -hmm. it's not. I think your mission here is to promote right. safe routes. So to we'd school. be creating a subcommittee that would have schools and you know school representatives. Um, obviously, myself from the Heart of New Ulm, and the re represent representatives from the Grand, and also some uh, a city council representative, perhaps. But the goal of this subcommittee would be to filter the designs um, that are submitted um, in order to have them meet the criteria. And one of the criteria for this project is that it. Um, relates to safe routes to school. So the murals have to incorporate some element of um, active transportation, walking, biking, uh, or safety. And um, the funding, I should mention, is also um, going to be private. We're looking for grants to, to accomplish this project. Mm -hmm. So you're not asking for any city money Correct. as part of this project? Yep. No, no city money should be involved. And uh, just following up on this, how how uh, would you and the grand uh, reach out to uh, artists for their uh, submission and their proposals? Yep, um, the grand in the fire hydrant project had a basically a call for proposals, as I understand it. Mm -hmm. So that would be a similar thing to what we would be doing. We would be using, you know, social media and stuff like that to kind of get this um, call for proposals out. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
and we, that would include the criteria that we um, had, had discussed. Mm -hmm. And my understanding from what I read is City Council would have the final vote on the yep. items that you would select. Yep. Okay. Um, and your timetable looks like you want to, and I know from working on the fire hydrant project, uh, you do need some, some time for submissions. Um, a lot of our artists are full-time employees elsewhere, and it takes time to get those things submitted. Um, I did talk with Mr. Curry a little bit about this project. Uh, I'd like to have him spend a few minutes talking about um, what he knows and any concerns he might have, if, if we could, please. If acceptable to the chair. Mm -hmm. Chair. Chair Curry, Public Works Superintendent. Mm -hmm. um, concerns I had, and I talked to Nathan, is uh, the removal of for for seal coating the intersection. Mm -hmm. um, they can't, seal coat won't stick to paint. Um, and after reading your traffic paint, your submission traffic paint, the only way I know to get it off is to grind it or sandblast it. Mm -hmm. It will not come off with a power wash. Mm -hmm. um, it will wear off in, in the traffic lanes, mm -hmm. but the part of the intersections that don't have vehicle traffic aren't gonna wear off. So there'd be an issue of getting it off. Somehow. And, and the options for that are what? Grinding it or sandblasting it mm -hmm. is the only way I know of to get it off. Okay. And talk about those costs. Well, I, the grinders, we have a, a line grinder, but it's designed to grind off a traffic line, mm -hmm. not an intersection. Mm -hmm. And it's going to leave a groove. A good example is that is by off of County 29 and... Uh, West Ridge Road, where they changed the traffic patterns going into Holiday Station. Mm -hmm. If you look in the center, that was double yellow and that's gone. You can see the, the grind marks are still there now, was five years ago. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. So in, in sandblasting, it would be you'd have to tarp the mm -hmm. intersections, the sidewalks to contain it, and then physically mm -hmm. go out there with a hand sandblaster to remove it and then sweep and pick up the, the sand okay. and the material. Um, Mr. Curry. Uh, can you give us some uh, idea of when uh, each of these uh, intersections would be uh, scheduled? I most certainly or, can. Uh, I'll bet you can. The Payne Street was just done last year, so that's not scheduled to be done again until 2020. And 3rd North in Minnesota is scheduled for next year, and State Street is scheduled for next year. Okay. Not saying we can't move that up to this year if that's what you right so decide right so we could we could move those two up for this year right and they'd be done and then they wouldn't be scheduled again until 20 2022 okay yes okay that is correct and the other just one more question mm -hmm. um um looking at the remo removal uh issue um that could be one of the uh, criteria for the art sure. that, that it not be um, you know sort of flat surface but uh, more along the lines of a sort of a line I'm so unimaginative right. but it could be like a just a line drawing of a bicycle that correct the denser the the design the, mm -hmm. the harder the longer it's going to be to get it off right. yes okay. that's correct well, I would wonder what Minneapolis and Madison, Wisconsin are doing for their paint. They'd have to have the same issue and same discussion, mm -hmm. and, um, but we don't know that, right, that they have some specialized paint for this type of, maybe we need to find that out before we can decide on this project. Because that cleanup does bother me with that cost, and not that we couldn't have the cost associated in with this entire project and the fundraising, but um, like I said, I would assume Minneapolis and Madison have had the same discussion. Mm -hmm. As, for, uh, uh, as far as what kind of work are you thinking it needs to be done? Seal coating is the road, or you're saying the road needs to be asphalt? No, just seal coating. Just seal coating. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Now you go out, um, when we were at the national conference, they were painting some of the um, bicycle paths green. I mean, they were, that's literally what they were doing. So mm -hmm. I know painting is happening all over mm -hmm. the country on different projects and streets. So I don't know if there's some new style of paint that maybe is easier to remove. I don't know. That could be. I, I'm not aware. I'm just... We're talking strictly yep. traffic paint. Yep. Mm -hmm. Which is what you have your concern on. And Nathan, right. you don't know for sure yet at this point? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Um. Well, I, I have a question for Kurt. Um, when you seal coat them, if you would move them up to um, seal coating them next year, 
would they be able to paint on them even next year? I mean, I would think that that seal coating takes time for it to really. Well, we, we would seal coat it this year in June, and it would this take year. yeah. So, uh, given a good month, we'd have to sweep it three or four times to get the loose rock off. Then they should be good to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay. And then I have another question. Um, how did you come up with four sites? Um, and how, why did you start there? Why didn't we start with maybe with one or, you know, how did we come up with four? The idea was to start with um, just one site, but then we, we uh, sort of got the grant as a partner and we started looking at, you know, if we're doing safe routes to school, um, there are sort of three uh, main uh, schools in town. There's the um, public schools. There's the uh, Lutheran St. Paul's School and then St. Paul's Elementary and St. Anthony's Elementary too then, mm -hmm. uh, so new ads. And then obviously um, the grand thought, you know, <coughs> since the grand was on board with the project, it, uh, it would have been cool to have uh, a mural by the grand mm -hmm. as well on uh, Minnesota and Third. Mm -hmm. And I, c I, I could, could see probably one of these murals downtown like by the grand where we have the fire hydrants, but we did not expand it outside of our downtown area. Um, just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Maybe why start with four if we don't know how it's going to be able to be removed? Or well, like, yeah. except that we won't know how it's going to work for five or six or seven or eight years. And I, yeah. I know that the d District 88 and the Safe Routes to School grant, uh, you know, they're really uh, moving to get kids uh, walking to school now you know especially with the with the shift over and in the way the uh, schools are going to be configured and I'm really in support of this uh, project perhaps because I've worked with some of those other groups that that are working toward the safe routes to school and I think that's really the important part um, I don't think there's been anything more flamboyant way uh, to say, look, we're, we're really doing something to encourage uh, uh, kids uh, to walk to school, to encourage parents to allow uh, their kids to walk to school, to say, look, m motorists, uh, kids are walking to school on this space. There's a school here. It's a big, it's a big sign. And I just don't think that there's any uh, any insurmountable uh, problems. I note that on our issue sheet, the, the motion is to receive the project uh, proposal uh, and direct the Safety Council, Safety Commission to uh, consider the project. Uh, and as we move forward, I'm sure this will be in front of us uh, several more times, and I think we can probably uh, e re address each one of those issues as they come up. My, my comment on this, I, when I first read this, I'm like, why the safety commission? What, what's here that is a safety concern if, and other than the traction paint? And I, I'm not sure if it needs to go to a safety commission. Brian? I, well, as I don't know what they anything do that's that. occurred in the public right-of-way has always progressed through the, the safety commission. Um, if you don't want it to go there, that's your prerogative. But when, when I talk with the city engineer, and the, and the assistant city engineer uh, it was, uh, the direction was gonna be to take it directly to the safety commission. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I don't see any reason why we can't you know, get it out here and talk about it, mm -hmm. kick it back to the safety commission and, and come back mm -hmm. with, yes, the, the traffic paint is, mm -hmm. is okay for motorcycles mm -hmm. or you know, mm -hmm. you know, scooters or whatever, I think, you know, cars and trucks are fairly stable. They got four mm -hmm. tires, but is this the kind of thing that, that mm -hmm. you can do with motorcycles? Mm -hmm. Don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, the other the other uh, question that they might delve further into is, I don't know if these pictures are, you know, 30 minutes after they were completed. Mm -hmm. I'd be really interested to see what does one of these look like after a year? You know, at once it's been down, mm -hmm. come back a year, and what's it look like? Mm -hmm. Is it black stripes? Not, not. I won't say like mm -hmm. people spinning their tires. I'm just saying when you lay down salt and sand in the intersection, mm -hmm. we have to repaint every one of our crosswalks. Every year we repaint that, and there's a reason. Mm -hmm. Because they get wore off from the traffic. And, and the so salt, I suppose, sure. and, kills it. And, well, the, the grit the and the sand, sand just, mm -hmm. sure. and the spinning tires takes that sure. that paint right off. Sure. So, uh, I mean, I even see it in my own garage. I, mm -hmm. My tire tracks go right in, 
that that pain's gone. Um, so I'd just be curious to see what a, what a year's worth of time if, mm -hmm. if these are brand spanking new that have never been drove over, mm -hmm. or if this is what they look like after a year. That, I mean, that to me that that'd be mm -hmm. important because just the the touch up. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, a little bit more in depth analysis from the maybe the safety side and mm -hmm. and uh, you know we could it could come back at the the meeting after the but that's next a safety, safety issue, right? That's a visual issue. Well, but well, I think I think just as a as a person, if I were sitting on the safety commission and I knew that every every issue that uh, involved a right of way came before us, uh, I'd be sort of uh, taken aback or uh, yeah. disrespected if it if it didn't come through uh, that body. I guess I you think know, we don't want to be a what Roger made a comment. I think it should mm -hmm. go to the safety commission and. At least they, they have an input to us. Mm -hmm. and a recommendation. I guess I just wanted to see on a safety issue. But yeah, I, I think that um, we don't really have information this evening about the traffic paint. Um, our street commissioner mentioned his familiarity with mm -hmm. it as far as removing mm -hmm. it, but as a motorcyclist, I also know that depending upon the type of traffic paint, there have been plenty of times on a corner, if you hit a line that's painted, you slip. And whether mm -hmm. you're on a motorcycle, a scooter, or a bicycle, which we're trying to encourage, mm -hmm. what kind of paint is going to be used? What is the coefficient of mm -hmm. friction? And are we, I mean, we don't want anyone to get hurt. We certainly don't want mm -hmm. to get sued by anyone claiming that somehow we made our streets less mm -hmm. safe mm -hmm. by making this decision. Okay. And, and I'm interested that other cities have done this, and so I think that there can sure. be more uh, information that we can gather. And but I, I, I guess... Um, if I had to vote right now, I, I probably would not be in support of it. I think there's some concern and there's maintenance issues. And so I really am in favor of sending it to the Safety Commission and getting more information mm -hmm. to be a little bit more comfortable with that decision. But mm -hmm. I do have some concerns, and I, I'm not sure if in those neighborhoods what those neighbors feel. Do they want that mural on the corner of their street? Do they... You know, do they care? I don't know. I, mean, I think it should send well, more, I think there'd more be a, there'd be a public respond. hearing before we put it down, wouldn't there? Mm. Well, no, well. you don't. You don't have to have a public okay. hearing on this. The city council controls the right of way. Mm -hmm. But okay. if you wanted to, you mm -hmm. you know, you could say, neighborhood, I, you mm -hmm. know, send a send mm -hmm. a postcard out to everybody in, in these affected mm -hmm. areas and say, we're this thinking of doing this. There's a public hearing. Come on, mm -hmm. you know, tell us what you want to think. Okay. Sure. But that's optional. That's up mm -hmm. to the council okay. if they want to do that. You know, and you know, I, I support the arts and everything, but I think we have to look that it's not a road distraction. You know, that people are going to be, you know, distracted from their driving. You know, we want them. You know, they're distracted enough right now, heat days and but stuff it is like that. But there's that stop sign. a four-way stop. Correct. But you I mean just driving through where others people walking sure. out to well, uh, take a look at it and yeah. you know and, and stuff. Part, uh, I don't know. You know. Uh, well, and part of the idea, part of the idea, it's like the Sharrows. It's it's almost a signal to the drivers. This is a this is a school route. You're you're really, in case you haven't noticed, you're right by St. Anthony. You know, be careful. Mm -hmm. So, but in in just I think you know in trying to get the message that they're getting want to get out, mm -hmm. to have it on the ground like that. I think yep for a month. It's kind of like a billboard. Once it's there, over a month, and you know that's a mm -hmm. common traffic area. How many people are really going to notice that mural? Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know if there's another way to use that money mm -hmm. to to get better bang for their buck. I'm just mm -hmm. not sure. Mm -hmm. And I think with the maintenance issues that that, I just have some concerns. So I would assume I there's a mixture of things that you're doing as far as bike safety notification and. Oh yeah, absolutely. The Safe Routes to School program is not just for murals. Mm -hmm. It's obviously there's a lot of things you're doing. Um, the bike routes is a good example of, of, of one thing that we've worked on to be able to inform parents of how best their child or the safest routes um, on bike around New Ulm. Mm -hmm. um, and similarly, we're working on walking routes because it's not exactly the same when you're walking as you're biking. You can walk downtown and it is safe. So mm -hmm. um, doing that as well. So there are other things to try and um, educate the public about you know, safety. Mm -hmm. We want to take some time and get a hold of Minneapolis and Madison and whoever else mm -hmm. and find out what they're doing, what kind of paint they're doing. Mm -hmm. 
but some of the issues that we've talked lentils. about tonight. Do a little more homework. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Lentils. Yeah. You know, yeah, so it's <coughs> so I'm going to I'm going to push the motion forward then. So with um, that, we move it on to the safety committee. Uh, in addition to have more information about what's going on in these other cities and what what they're utilizing, great. and I, I support the project. We have some great artists in our community. Um, I, I think it's a worthwhile project. We just mm -hmm. need to. My my concern is uh, is in three years, what's mm -hmm. it going to look like? That mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. that's so. Uh, hopefully, there's some paint that can be able to either be painted over or blasted off or whatever without too much expense. So that that's where I'm going to be looking at. So hopefully you can bring me back that information too. Great. Okay. Second. We got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed no. Motion carries. Item 3E. Consider motion to authorize the request from the citizens of the er, citizens for a city staff to snow plow salt sand the recreational paved trails during the winter months for <coughs> pedestrians and bicycle recreational purposes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Grummet, you got any more on that or we got it I all was, in front I of was us? I was asked to put this on the agenda. Yes. All I, right. <laughs> yes. And I, I, when I, f I live on uh, 820 South German <coughs> um, and if you're familiar with the uh, bike trail, you can access the bike trail uh, from 7th south and also from 12th south um, and from 7th to 3rd that section of the uh, uh, trail is uh, plowed because that's uh, that's the dog park and it's also the place where uh, the city stores its uh, snow and then um, going south uh, from 12th um, that is uh, uh, plowed because people have to get into their uh, storage area so you've got those two stretches and then I found out that uh, one of my neighbors has been taking it upon himself uh, because he's noticed all the uh, foot traffic on that path between uh, 7th and 12th he's been taking it upon himself uh, to take his snowblower down there and plow that path so um, I think there are a lot of people who are using using that uh, paved trail, and I would like to uh, hear from uh, some of those folks as far as um, what what their thoughts are. Whether whether the idea is to uh, uh, ask the city to plow the entire uh, five miles of the trail, or if there's certain sections that are used more than others. So that's that's what I'd like to hear from the people who are. Uh, Mr. In President, the audience. I have a comment also. Mm -hmm. I was also contacted by a resident um, wanting, inquiring about the trail being plowed, and um, I had was conversing with him and had told him, you know, that you know if he, if he had a group of people, you know, together, and um, it looks like they've started a petition and that there's many names on that petition, you know, that if they can show a need, that we would probably take a look at that and. Um, so I feel too, I think um, with more winter biking, mm -hmm. um, you know, we've had a very nice winter and um, there's people with the wider tires and they want to do mm -hmm. some winter biking. To have that trail available and the walkers, there's mm -hmm. just, I think it's just very well used in that we might really want to consider um, s um, plowing it at least. Mm -hmm. And I think my concern is I want to know the costs, obviously, and what, mm -hmm. what is that all going to entail? Once you start plowing, you also got to sand it. And, um, and I talked with Mr. Curry about that some today, too, and I know he's got some information I think we should have as well. Um, so that's, that's where kind of. I guess I, I question um, whether we have to sand or not. No, I, I'm, it's my understanding. I thought that, like in Mankato, they plow, but they don't really treat it with anything. Us, yeah. mm -hmm. um, I could be wrong, but. I've made calls today, spent time on the phone, talked to other cities that do have bike trails. And of course, every city has concerns. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest concerns is safety. And mm -hmm. just kind of what you made a comment there. What they all told me is if you plow a bike trail and you salt the bike trail, you're going to have accidents because what's going to happen is the salt that you put out is going to go off to the side, get into the snow. The snow is going to melt later on, come out to the bike trail, and you're going to have ice on the bike trail, which mm -hmm. is going to give you liability. So they said, it depends on the size of the city, to the amount of people that you got commuting, to whether it's 
feasible to do it. Mm -hmm. If it's safe for all the school was their number one priority, they took care of those right away. The second priority is people that are commuting. The last priority, recreational. Because the simple reason is, is your liability is getting out there and some of them do parts mm -hmm. of trails, some do a lot of the trails. And I guess I got some concerns with, you know, mm -hmm. well, putting salt on and having liability. Well, I can tell you that people have uh, have slipped and and uh, uh, gone in, end over tea kettle without it being plowed, you know. So I mean, right. that's that's gonna that's gonna be an uh, issue regardless of whether we no. whether I we clear I the realize too not. that they have the bigger bikes and things like yeah. that, and they do trail drives and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, but mm -hmm. you know, how far we want to go, I guess I'd like to hear from the audience yeah. if anybody has anything on it or whatever, but. Cindy Winters, Hardin New Elm Project, and since um, I've worked with the Hardin New Elm Project, I've been asked every year several times why the city doesn't plow the, the bike trail. So um, I had another coworker ask that, and it's like, well, call your city council member, let them know, and then then it was recommended that we get a uh, put a petition out, and we've had over a hundred signatures on the petition, and people are use the trail for a variety of different reasons. People use it for recreation, they use it for transportation, and they feel like it's safer to use the bike trail in the winter time for walking. Um, they feel there it's a little bit safer than walking on the streets and sometimes on, on the sidewalks as well. So it just it helps promote the mission of the Heart of New Island Project that we're an active city, and we, um, and I think we need to think about the bike trail as more than just recreation anymore. We have to start thinking about it as a transportation corridor. And if you think about it in a transportation corridor, you wouldn't think about not clearing the streets. So if it becomes an, a, a way for people to get to and from work, you just, you're helping them commute. And I know a lot of work sites are located along the bike route mm -hmm. have people that do commute, and they also use it during their break time to go out and walk. Mm -hmm. And we want to promote work site wellness as well and help the employees um, have better outcomes and are more productive. Mm -hmm. So getting back to Ruth Ann, how much are we talking? All of the bike trail? The, yeah, the section from, um, I don't know how far north I'd go, but I would go down to 20th Street, 20 South. And then the, the bike trail that's not the sidewalk portion. Is that fair enough? Is that s the section that we're talking about? Which that's mm -hmm. five, maybe six miles worth of in distance. Well, just speaking for my part of the, I, I, I think uh, uh, Councillor Fisher and I are the two council people that have mm -hmm. uh, have the bike route uh, in their uh, area. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, to me, it's uh, getting back and forth to uh, high V. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting back and forth. Uh, you, you get pretty close to Kraft and pretty close uh, to the other uh, workplaces if you worked at the Holiday Inn or... Uh, those sorts of things you can get back and forth on the bike trail, uh, but I'd ask Councillor Fisher what people are telling her uh, they use the bike trail for. Well, they really haven't really designated what they've actually used it for. I was thinking it was more for rec recreation mm -hmm. on the north end, or on the yeah the north end. Mm -hmm. um, I would I would s push to just plow it all. Once you're on there, just go from one end to the other. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but are we talking Highland? Also, there's the bike trail goes. The whole highland, all the way from. That's the bike oh, that's route. That's the bike that's route. Bike route. It's still trail. a bike trail, though. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But Garden highland, Street too. highland is plowed anyway, I believe. We we plow one side, and we just plow basically a, a bike route sidewalk because on the well, cause it's one side of the street the we have both, right. so we plow just one tr okay. path. Right. So the there's a path already plowed there. Right. So, so we you wouldn't plow anymore. Right. Yeah. That list, that's yours up that's there right. on Highland. Yep. All right. We used to plow both sides, but now we just plow the one. Okay. All right. I guess I would like to hear more from right. people okay. that want a club. Uh, Bob Beck. I live at 318 South Franklin in Newham. And um, uh, 
the, the bike, I think all the councilor members have at least a portion of the bike route or bike trail mm -hmm. in your in your section, so everybody has a piece of the mm -hmm. piece of the pie. Uh, the only section that's not ha does not have snow removed on it is the section from 20th South all the way up to uh, what is it 23rd, uh, where it comes out mm -hmm. by. Um, oh, north, right, by yeah, yeah up by the north. apartment complex up there. Mm -hmm. So that's the only stretch that's that's not. Uh, paved mm -hmm. and uh, the rest of it going by the new high school is they have s you've s removed the snow from that ever since mm -hmm. that's been put in so that's mm -hmm. been going on on an annual basis and there's no salt or sand added to that also and that does get a lot of foot traffic up there uh, I noticed mm -hmm. the hours after it was cleared from this last snow event uh, there were fresh tracks you could see mm -hmm. where up there including mine so mm -hmm. um, <laughs> So I, I'm a user of the bike trail. My wife and I use it a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, if you plow that section down there uh, on the, the, f the original section, we would use that also. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we do use it to go to the grocery store, walk from Hy-Vee to where, where we live. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so, you know, and uh, uh, we would do that in the winter times with plow mm -hmm. uh, rather than the mm -hmm. sidewalk. So mm -hmm. it's also, those are also, the, the, that stretch is also some of the longest stretch without intersections in it mm -hmm. so it makes it for a lot easier to uh, uh, you don't have to worry about cross cross traffic in the mm -hmm. winter mm -hmm. so uh, you know if if it works fine in the budget that's great well, if not uh, you just mm -hmm. go around it I guess mm -hmm. you know. well and I, I was uh, I read the journal uh, and uh, I think that uh, we can uh, at least see uh, how it works. Uh, I think I'd like to hear uh, if we've got enough uh, money in our budget to at least try it uh, for this part of the winter, then we can look at it and maybe I'll try to pay a little more attention to how much use it is and see if uh, the costs are, are uh, prohibitive. Uh, but I guess as the costs are difficult not knowing how much snow we're gonna get. And oh, right, um, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, hard to I think you can, you can generalize though, uh, to be quite honest, we have approximately 10 snow events per winter. Some are heavier than others, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you got five miles of, of trail and you can, you know, if you gotta make two passes, you know, paths, one down one side and come back through the other side, you know, you got, uh, 10 miles, at, uh, if you could do a, an operational 10 mile an hour, that's gonna take you an hour. But so you've got some time to get there and some time to get back and, and miscellaneous uh, you know, events to make it happen. So let's say two hours per event, then there's, there's six hour or six snow events still to come, mm -hmm. you know, for the rest of the winter. So, mm -hmm. you know, you got uh, 12, 14 hours all total when you're, you're all said and done, if you don't do sand and salt, mm -hmm. you just plow it mm -hmm. and uh, you know, good enough. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I I don't think we're talking monumental dollars. Mm -hmm. I think when this originally, the, the, the bike trail was originally opened up, it was uh, some uh, loss of local government aid. And, you know, at oh, that yeah, time, it was, times. we had to focus on the important mm -hmm. uh, stuff like the streets and whatnot. But if the council, you know, wanted to, you know, what do we got, you know, 15 hours at uh, even $20 an hour, you know, mm -hmm. under five hundred dollars, probably. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of a thing. Well, and uh, uh, Councillor Sh uh, Schultz was uh, talking about priorities. I mean, obviously, this isn't this isn't going to be the first thing that's plowed. We've got to get the downtown plowed and other and major snow routes removed and, and, and mm -hmm. yeah, streets right. cleared and then right. come at a low priority. But uh, but I'm certainly willing to try it for the rest of this winter and. Uh, yeah, the other person wants to speak. Oh, too. okay. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. Hi, uh, Cindy Weedle in um, 726 South Front Street, mm -hmm. I live. Um, and one thing I just wanted to mention too, you know, you mentioned the cost of salt. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering too if we really even actually have to salt and sand it because I know the area that you're talking about between 7 South and 12 South where mm -hmm. that somebody goes down with the snowblower, mm -hmm. you know, if you've got the sun shining within a couple days, that is clear yeah. down to the yeah. to mm -hmm. the pavement. So, mm -hmm. you know, just kind of wanted to comment on the expense of uh, salt and sand. Mm -hmm. And then also too, if it's something that you don't want to look at doing year round, another suggestion I would have is um, clean it off in the spring because, you know, come March, 
end of February when it's nice out. And I know we can't control if it's going <laughs> to snow in February or, or March, but I know that the nicer months in mm -hmm. spring, we're waiting for the bike trail to unthaw so we can get our bikes out and, mm -hmm. and That was walk. one of the phone calls I got was mm -hmm. mentioning exactly that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like to walk them in March. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's warmer. Yeah, but you can't control it. It could snow right, at the end of March. Yeah, yeah but exactly. Yeah, I, I don't know. A lot of snow in March. Those were just some additional mm -hmm. thoughts I had. Thank you. So. Okay, thank you. Tom, you got it. Can I go back? Next. Yeah. I find Goose Town by the way. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Cindy. Mm -hmm. Tony Miller, 327 South Valley. Mm -hmm. I am a uh, resident of Goose Town, of course, and uh, we've had a couple of Goose Town meetings, Friends of Goose Town meetings, okay. and uh, one of the things that came up that we talked about was maintenance at parks and so on. Mm -hmm. And and um, shortly, right towards the end of one of our meetings, one of the questions came up about whether or not the trail, why the trail hasn't been plowed. Mm -hmm. And one comment was, we have city trucks that drive by with their plows up in the air, pickup trucks that are driving right by the trail, and they all they have to do is swing in there and plow it out. So it doesn't sound like it's that would be that critical of a thing, uh, based on the, those meetings. But I also made a phone call to um, to uh, Humane Society, to the Humane Society, Brown County Humane Society, and as soon as I suggested that we might be doing something, this is before I found out that there was a petition and all this. Mm -hmm. As soon as I mentioned it to the gal there, she says, there's at least a mile and a half a day that we take the dogs and the cats out. Mm -hmm. And but the dogs specifically. But the dogs, they take a <laughs> mile, mile and a half minimum. And, they, and right now, because the trail isn't plowed, mm -hmm. the whole trail isn't plowed, they have to go down on the streets, which isn't that big of a deal, but they said that they would use it, they would use it constantly if they could have parts of it opened up. Yeah. So that was the two, th two things that came out from it. Mm -hmm. um, I, like I said, uh, the, we got towards the end of a meeting and it was discussed, and then I found out through the grapevine that, well actually through email, mm -hmm. that there was a petition started. So I put out a couple of emails to that effect and I had some comments come back from some people saying, I would walk the trail if it was plowed, mm -hmm. pretty much. So I wanted to make sure you knew that there are some people, even though it might be recreational, I know there's been some things said about possibly using it to go to work. I used it as, when I was bicycling, I used it to go to 3M every day. I'm retired now, but I would have used it more in the wintertime if I could do that, you know, if it was if it was plowed. So the segment that I'd be talking <coughs> about would be, the easiest way to say it would be Applebee's to the KC Road is the best way that I would describe it. Mm -hmm. That segment, that's the first segment of the bike trail that I think was d developed. So in my opinion, from what I've understood from people is the rest of it, the circle route, mm -hmm. that gets a lot, of, most of that gets plowed anyway, I understand. But what I would say, and I, and I, and I, wanna, I wouldn't want to speak for everyone, but I'd say that'd be the segment that we're concerned about here is from Applebee's to probably the KC Road. Oh, great. So that's all I've got. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Curry's here. Do we want to hear from the street? Oh, yeah, why not? Comments? <coughs> By Mr. Curry coming, I've been talking. He's he's going to take responsibility for the mm -hmm. bike trail snow removal, right? Or is he going to, or is he going to have Park and Rec take care? Well, I'm that's that's <laughs> that's for the city Tom? manager. <laughs> hey, Kurt, I'm making an assumption, maybe an incorrect right. one. Push it, push it to Park and Rec because every utility or city I call it Park and Rec. Uh -huh. I think that's good. Well, and they do the circle look, roof. Okay, <laughs> part of it. Yeah. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's black. I mean, it's any not concerns green. It's black. I want to hear if you have any concerns about this from just um, your perspective. Well, from a plow just the plowing aspect, no. Okay. You know, especially if it's a low priority, you know, third day when we get everything else done. Yep. Sure, we can take that pickup that's driving by. He's doing alley routes when you see him. That's why he's skipping all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now, the third day, sure, we could, okay. we could plow. Mm -hmm. Sanding, it's a whole other ballgame. Because mm -hmm. I've only got the big stuff. So I'd have to I'd have to sand it with a dump truck. Mm -hmm. That's where Tom would come in with his little tool cat. But mm -hmm. that would be a chore for that even. That probably wouldn't be that good for the trail itself. Not okay. running the dump truck on it. Absolutely oh. not. Or the salt as far as right. I see. Mm -hmm. right. right. And we don't really sand up on Highland and any other place. I guess I hadn't really thought about that. That's why we were talking about it. So no. the, the, mm -hmm. the stretch of bike trail you're talking about does is the lowland, so it gets a lot of drainage to it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's there's going to be some slippery spots. There's going to be some slippery spots. Mm -hmm. and, and one thing to remember is we have those slippery spots in the spring anyway. You we get do. freeze yeah. and refreeze and, Your you know, yeah, yeah, you know. So I think people are, know that, know that when they go out in the winter and. I guess I'd support it provided we don't salt or sand. 
you know, yeah. as long as it doesn't plow it. Because one of the other issues that was reported to me from other cities is environmental. If you're going to start putting salt down there and things like that, that yeah. you've got a whole other issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. well, I, I support it as well, too. I, I got an email um, today from um, an individual that uh, talked about that's where uh, our retired folks are moving more towards doing more of the biking, doing more of this, um, and uh, the Heart of New Elms project and the biking project. I, it kind of all fits. So mm -hmm. I'm going to offer a motion to plow the recreational paved trail during the winter months low priority mm -hmm. um, no salt no sand second mm -hmm. we got a motion the second any more discussion and then I think we should review it for next right. year before we yeah. decide if we're going to continue it for next year here from the residents if it worked if it, mm -hmm. if it didn't I mean if, if it, I don't want to waste the money if people aren't going to yeah, we'll know it, so. then we'll have a number if it's 500 bucks or a thousand dollars a little bit better so if this the staff budget. could sort of keep an eye on that or track that for us i think brian up helpful <laughs> i mean how much time is it really <laughs> <laughs> how much time it really yeah. takes to clean that path and yeah. yep. after we've had some experience doing it mr right. president just for clarification we're talking about the original five mile stretch yes, yes. 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 Okay. thank you any more discussion Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. With no more business, there we go. Meeting adjourned. Good job.